All right. Buckle up, everybody, because today's deep dive is a big one. We are diving headfirst into China's EV battery scene. We're talking about a global surge in electric vehicles. And of course, yeah. China's really at the heart of it all. Yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting time to be plugged into this world, that's for sure. Yeah. The pace of innovation is just incredible. And you're right, the decisions being made over there in China right now, they're going to have ripple effects across the entire EV industry. Totally. We're talking about like mega factories pumping out batteries like crazy, the scram for resources and some seriously ambitious companies all vying for a piece of that market share. But we have the inside scoop. We are diving deep into a fresh market analysis from Deutsche Bank. This just came out September 11th and they have their catalyst map, which basically lays out all the need to know upcoming events. Ooh, and we got something even juicier. We got our hands on a translated transcript from BYD's latest earnings call. Oh, wow. Well, BYD, of course, being a major player in the Chinese market, getting a peek behind the curtain like that, really invaluable. Absolutely. So if you want to sound like the smartest person at your next water cooler conversation about EVs, you are in the right place. Let's start with the big picture, this Deutsche Bank report. It throws out some pretty eye-popping numbers, just about the massive scale of China's battery production. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not just big, it's growing at an insane pace. In August 2024 alone, Total battery production for electric vehicles and energy storage systems. We're talking everything from cars to, you know, giant grid batteries mm. shot up 38 percent compared to a year before. 38 percent. That's not just growth. That's like hitting the accelerator and just leaving everyone else in the dust. And a big part of that growth story, it's centered around one type of battery chemistry, LFP or lithium iron phosphate. Right. And this is where it gets interesting. LFP batteries, they have some real key advantages in the market right now. They're cost effective. It is a huge. Affordability is key if people are going to adopt electric vehicles on a wide scale. But they're also less reliant on materials like nickel and cobalt, which are facing some serious supply chain pressures these days. Mm -hmm. Okay, so LFP is cheaper to make, uses materials that are easier to get. No wonder it's taking off. But it's not just what's happening in China, right? This LFP surge, this is global. 100%. China's battery exports are going through the roof. Hmm. We're talking a 68% year-on-year jump in August 2024 alone. Again, according to that Deutsche Bank report. And this is happening as we're seeing a global battery shortage. So China is stepping in, not just as a major producer, but as like a crucial supplier yeah. to meet the world's electric ambitions. Yeah. It's like they saw this wave coming and positioned themselves right on top of it. Okay. Oh, yeah. So we've got China just absolutely cranking out these batteries. Exports are through the roof and LFP is really shaking things up. So big question here. Can they keep this momentum going? Because this EV market... It is evolving faster than a self-driving car dodging potholes out there. Yeah, that's the billion-dollar question. Mm. To, to answer it, I think we really need to look beyond just like the raw numbers. That Deutsche Bank report, it actually gives us some really interesting clues about where things might be headed. Okay, I love it when you say that. Let's get into the details. Yeah. I am super curious about this whole battle between LFP and this other battery chemistry, NCM. It's like a clash of the titans. Right. Classic case of just disruption in action. So you see NCM batteries. They've traditionally held the performance edge. You know, they still dominate in certain segments. But that affordability of LFP, it's a game changer, hmm. especially for those mass market EVs that need to, you know, appeal to everyday consumers. And what the Deutsche Bank report shows, both LFP and NCM production are growing but the trajectory of LFP is way steeper. So you're saying that LFP is actually starting to chip away at that dominance that NCM has had. So it's not just that China's making more batteries, they're actually changing the playing field a little bit with this whole LFP surge. Exactly, and there's another factor that could really supercharge this shift. Price of lithium carbonate? Oh yeah, the report mentioned a pretty dramatic drop in lithium carbonate prices. We're talking 68% year-on-year plunge just in August. What's going on there? So there are a few things at play here. Increased supply is a big one. New lithium projects are coming online. And there might be some easing of demand as well. Now, if this trend holds, and that's a big if in this market, it could mean lower battery production costs across the board. Okay. Cheaper batteries. I can already hear car buyers everywhere celebrating that. Oh, but... yeah. <laughs> what does this mean for the biggest players in China's battery scene? We can't talk about this without mentioning no. <laughs> the giant in the room. CATL? Right. They're still the undisputed champs in terms of like domestic battery installations in China, according to the report, at least. Yeah. And their success is not an accident. They've been so strategic. Heavy investment in R&D, aggressive scaling of production capacity. Yeah. 
and savvy partnerships with all the major automakers. So they had a plan and they are executing. Yeah. But it is a competitive market out there. What about these other companies that are trying to get a piece of the pie? That's where this catalyst map from Deutsche Bank comes in. Right. Give me the highlights. Who is launching what? When should we mark our calendars? Okay, so picture this. We've got this lineup of like sleek, futuristic EVs, all charged up, ready to roll. And that's what this catalyst map feels like. It's like a sneak peek into the future of driving. And yeah. we've got some really heavy hitters stepping up to the plate in the coming months. Yeah, it really does feel like a parade yeah. of innovation. You know, each company coming out with their latest and greatest. It's exciting. Yeah. And it tells us a lot about where this market is going, not just in China, but globally. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, who are the ones to watch here and what are they bringing to the table? Well, we've got BYD, always a, a major player. They're getting ready to launch their new Sea Lion and Song Pro models. We're September 23rd, mark your calendars, yeah. and then, just a few days before that, actually, yeah. on September 20th, Zeker is making a big splash with their Zeker 7X SUV. Okay, so BYD first. They're going for more of that mass market appeal we were talking about. Yeah, it seems that way. The Sea Lion and Song Pro, they seem to be aiming right at the heart of the market. Competitive pricing, yeah. attractive features, and with the potential cost savings of those LFP batteries, you know, they could be a really compelling option for a lot of buyers. Makes sense, especially with how price sensitive a lot of EV buyers are, right. especially as more and more companies are getting into the game. So what about Zeker? The 7X sounds like they're going for a different kind of buyer. Yeah, for sure. Zeker is all about that like premium EV experience, luxury features, cutting edge tech, and a price tag to match. Yeah. They're going right after like the Tesla Model Y, the NIO ES6, that kind of buyer. Wow, okay, high stakes. It's like luxury car showdown, but electric. And then of course we've got Xpeng. Their technology day is October 24th, and they are diving deep into the world of plug-in hybrids, the PHEVs, and, drum roll please, autonomous driving. Yeah, Xpeng has always been kind of a tech darling in this space really pushing the boundaries of what EVs can do. And their autonomous driving features are definitely, they're really interesting. This technology day could give us a sneak peek into the future of driving. And it just shows how important self-driving technology is becoming in the market. Absolutely. Okay, so we've got affordable, we've got luxury, and we've got self-driving. China's EV scene really has it all. But we can't forget about that exclusive look we got into what BYD is thinking with their latest earnings call. What kind of intel did we get from that transcript? Well, one word sums up that whole call confidence. They're seeing strong demand across the board, really. They're Dynasty and Ocean Series, specifically the Quinn and L, the Song and L, the Song Pro, and the Dolphin 05 models. Those are doing really well. It's really interesting to hear them talk about specific models like that. It tells me they're really paying attention to what people actually want. They're not just, you know, yeah. throwing stuff out there to see what sticks. Yeah, they have a plan. Yeah. And they're not slowing down. BYD is going all in on expanding their production capacity. They want to be the global market leader. Ambitious. But based on everything we talked about today, would you bet against them? I don't think I would. And here's why. BYD isn't just riding this wave. They're shaping it. You know how they adapt. All the challenges they're facing, rising tariffs, these regional supply chains. What they do is going to be a lesson for everybody in this industry. Yeah, they're like a microcosm for all the challenges and opportunities in the EV market right now. Totally. So to wrap things up today, it's pretty clear that China is solidifying its place as like the electric engine of the world. Huh. They're making the batteries, they're exporting them at record rates. And these companies, they're coming out with some truly innovative stuff. We're talking everything from those affordable EVs to luxury rides and even self-driving tech. Yeah, it's a, it's a dynamic and it's a rapidly evolving landscape for sure. And while there are definitely challenges, geopolitical tensions, these supply chain questions, ethically sourcing these materials, the momentum is definitely there. It is an exciting time to be following all of this. And one thing is for sure, the future of mobility is looking very, very electric.